The Dubs won their fourth straight, three of which were without Stephen Curry in the nation's capital. That said, in Steph's return from an ankle injury against former backup Jordan Poole, Curry honored the late Kobe Bean Bryant by scoring 24 points in 24 minutes. For the Wiz, Poole also had 24, but for Golden State, in addition to Wardell scoring what was tied for a game most and combining with Draymond, Trace, Payton II, and Wiggins for 64, the bench mob fueled by Heald and Kaminga produced a monster 61. Draymond and Jordan had their fair share of interactions, flashing us back to the back and forths they had as teammates. You're about to see the team statistic defining why the Warriors have the best second unit in the association and it's not even close. Keep it locked right here for that and much more. More. Right quick, almost 80% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back. Behind leading scorer, the microwave Buddy Heald, who had 20 points against Washington and is averaging 22 per game on an absurd 51% shooting from the field and 50% shooting from distance through the first seven games, Golden State has the best bench in the association by a mile. Averaging 61 points as a team from their bench unit, the Warriors have a bigger point per game gap off the pine between the second ranked Pacers, then the second ranked Pacers, and the number 16 ranked Orlando Magic. Combined with Buddy, bringing Kaminga off the bench has been huge for the Warriors, and you also have to give credit to Moses Moody's scoring on the wing, Kevon Looney's finishing up front, and the extra splices of bucket getting they're getting from Kyle Anderson and Lindy Waters III. Scariest part is, this 61 point per game average from the second unit doesn't include Pajemski for the most part, who was starting in Steph's absence, and also key bench piece DeAnthony Melton's missed all but three games with a back injury. Before traveling to the nation's capital, in their previous win, Brandon Pajemski made some clutch shots down the stretch against the Rockets to force OT. Then Jonathan Kaminga took over in the overtime period with three crucial buckets which carried Golden State over the top. While they blew a 31-point lead in Houston and allowed the Rockets to take the lead down the stretch, but ultimately pulled out a W behind some clutch play from JK, in Washington, the Dubs led from minute 1 through 48, hanging on to their advantage despite a wizard run that cut their lead down to 6 in the fourth quarter. After playing a crucial role in the absence of Stephen Curry, all while battling through a broken nose, Brandon Pajemski was forced to leave Monday's game in Washington due to an illness, and he didn't return. The starting five held its own defensively to open the game, with Wiggins rotating out to reject Bilal Koulibaly, then Green smothering Keyshawn George at the end of the shot clock for the stuff, the Warriors tallied two blocks on the opening possession of the game. Trace Jackson Davis is second in the NBA in field goal percentage, only trailing Detroit's Jalen Duran, and the man had a monster poster in the opening minutes against the Wizards. Trace finished with 12 points on 6 for 11 field goals to go along with 6 rebounds, 3 dimes, and a block. Kaminga had 15 in this one, and he'd bail the Warriors out at the end of the shot clock with a smooth post fadeaway to show off his scarily evolving finesse. Poole would point at Draymond after making this three in the face of Green, only for on the very next possession for Steph to make a buzzer-beating triple to end the first half, and for Draymond to point at Poole. It was nice to see that this moment with Jordan guarding Draymond in the post didn't escalate into anything, as Green played it cool after Poole got physical with him, bit of a nerve-wracking moment right there. You had Poole and GP2 messing with each other all game, but the funniest moment between Green and Poole was when Carlton Bub Carrington was chatting it up with Draymond, and Jordan said, nah, uh, uh, you ain't talking to that dude. My favorite thing about this reunion was how Draymond gave praise to Jordan postgame. Poole's leading the league in steals per game so far while averaging an extremely efficient 22.5 points per night. And here was Green on Jordan's game in comparison to how he played in his first season with the Wizards last year. You mentioned Jordan's age. Uh, he's kind of in some ways, as you mentioned, kind of like the veteran on that team. What are you seeing uh, as he enters kind of year two and, and what you saw? He's playing better. He's playing a lot better. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think his shot selection, you know, you come to a new situation. I've never done it, but I've watched a lot of it. Um, but as a competitor, you just want to show everything that you can do. You want to show that you're the guy. And I think last year he was pressing a lot. Uh, you know, he just wanted it to happen so bad. And this year, he's a lot more settled in. You know, he's not uh, taking the sh some of the shots that he was taking last year. They were bad shots. And it, I don't think it was a matter of selfishness. I think it was a matter of wanting it so bad to prove to people that I can have my own team, that I can come here and be successful, that it ends up working against you. And, you know, this year he's doing a much better – like he had one turnover tonight. Uh, 
that speaks to the patience that he's now playing with, you know. And so I think he's doing a, a really good job of settling in now and letting the game come to him, not necessarily chasing after it uh, like he was doing last year, you know. But you'd much rather have a guy that's going to chase after it and go for broke than the guy that's just come in and be like, ah, I ain't got it, you know. So I think he's starting to show now, you know, more of who he is and what he's grown into in this league. As opposed to last year, he just wanted it so bad. I think he's doing a lot better job this year. For Draymond, he dropped the team third most 18 points on 5 for 7 shooting from the field and 3 for 4 shooting from distance. The Warriors improved to 54 and 7 all time when Green makes at least three triples and the four-time All-Star and NBA champion is shooting an astounding 52.6% from three-point range on the year. Especially given Pajemski being forced to go back to the locker room, Stephen Curry's return was massive. He got it going right out of the shoot by draining a triple on the Warriors' first offensive possession and played within the flow of the offense by dropping a few silky dimes to TJD in the pocket. Steph found his form in the second half, where after using a GP2 cross screen to get room for a three and finding Gary on a cut to the basket for the reverse jam, he'd show off how healthy his ankle is by hanging in the air to complete this layup in transition. Speaking Speaking on that ankle, Curry fully broke down his injury and how against the Clippers, he twisted his ankle twice. Be careful. I mean, 24 minutes tonight seemed like you were kind of... I was playing just with the minute restriction and trying to figure out how to space those minutes out. That's why I didn't start in the third quarter to close both the third and the fourth. Um, I feel good. It's just, you know, it's still early in the year and you're trying to build up the, the endurance. Um, my ankle feels fine. It's just you don't want to be in a position where you get fatigued and put yourself in jeopardy. So this is a good step and stone. I don't think we've talked to you since you did it. I know it was kind of you had two in the same game that, that did it. Um, I mean, did the first one kind of lead to the second one? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been through plenty of those episodes, yeah. and I know whether it's something I can play on or not, I made a misjudgment on, on that one because it was right away. The adrenaline got the best of me, but thankfully it was only a little over a week and I feel good now. How much will you push to, to uh, bump this minute total up over 30 for the, you know, I mean, you're in Boston Wednesday and, and big games ahead. Oh, that's why this was important to um, get through this game where I could play aggressively, but no, I wasn't stretching to too many minutes, but the rest of this road trip is tough. We got three tough teams, and we want to keep building momentum. So I'm sure I'll play more, but I feel good enough to do it. All the vibes are high after winning four straight, improving a six and one on the year, and four and zero on the road. The Dubs now face an incredibly difficult, verging on impossible schedule. They'll play the reigning champion Boston Celtics, followed by the undefeated eight and zero Cleveland Cavaliers, the undefeated seven and zero OKC Thunder, the reigning West champion Dallas Mavericks, and the Memphis Grizzlies with a healthier than ever John Morant. Let me know what you think their record will be over that tough stretch of games down below. This was your boy D Flow and I'll see you next video.